Hello and welcome back to the Attacking 2 podcast. We are today joined by Younes at Younes HH on Twitter to talk about Chelsea, to not talk about the game as it is tomorrow as we are recording on Sunday now. But we have a lot of things to talk about. We had the Malmo game in the last week. We had, yeah, a few discussions about our fan base, who is a real fan, who is not. Um, I'm very delighted to talk about that, even though it is a bit of a discussion where I, I don't think there's that there's much much discussion between us three here because I think we are very much on one ship here. But let's see how the uh, discussion goes. Um, we are just taking it away with one question. All right, and we are jumping straight into the discussion here. Uh, Eunice, very happy to have you on here. Um, Twitter handle of him is in the discuss in the description below. Twitter handles of all of the involved people in the description below. Um, let's start with the discussion on everyone's lips at the moment on Twitter. Uh, who is a real fan? Is someone a real fan if he lives abroad and can't go to games, Eunice? <laughs> Firstly, thank you for having me on. Um, it's an absolute pleasure coming on. Um, we're going to have a good combo. Uh, to answer your question, everyone that supports Chelsea, you know, uh, through and through, wherever they are in the world, is a Chelsea fan. Simple as that, because those that go to games, yes, contribute via buying tickets, um, buying merchandise at the mega store, um, whatever it may be. They're doing, the, you know, the miles, they're traveling, they're doing all of that. But the ones who are abroad, who can't go to games, who, you know, can't be here, who aren't even in London, for example, um, they're buying things online. They're buying merchandise. They're contributing to TV sales, TV rights. Um, the amount of viewers is them. Um, that all counts. So as a fan, if you're going or you're not going, as long as you follow Chelsea and you mean it, you're a fan. So I don't buy into anyone that says, um, you know, if you don't go to games, you're not a real fan. No, if you go to games, you're privileged. Simple as that. If you can go to games and you're able to, it means you're in a good position. Um, whether that means uh, financially, or whether that means by distance, you you live close to the ground, you're not far, you live in London, it's easy to access. Um, myself, who I'm not in London at the moment, but I, I'm born and bred in London. London, Stamford Bridge is like half an hour away from me. It's not a problem for me to get there. So I see myself as lucky for someone who is close distance, but there's people who are not in that position. They cannot go to games, but they have a right to follow their team. So yeah, anyone that wears blue and means it is a Chelsea fan mm. and we're all equal. <laughs> Everyone who watches on YouTube can see now that Jimmy very much approves that answer, but <laughs> your opinion well, Jimmy. I couldn't agree more. I mean, that this is, even being topicized is ridiculous. Uh, it should be obvious what the answer is to the question. I mean, uh, we actually talked about this with Alex Goldberg when he was on the podcast a few weeks uh, ago, and it was the same. I mean, already back then, although this hadn't been hadn't escalated as much then, but I mean, due to him rising to fame, of course, it's always been said, ah, oh, you know, his haters, yeah, he's American, he doesn't count as much, which is ridiculous. You know, he, he's is he's got good opinions. He's got football knowledge, same as anyone else here. And I mean, look at look at Lawrence. I mean, perfect example as well. You know, he yeah. lives in Austria. He's Austrian, but he goes there as often as he can. And we've actually got a few of them in the Austrian supporters, just as we're living in Austria, just <laughs> uh, as example. And you know, they spend a lot of money always with flights. You know, having to have take a holiday uh, with their employer. You know, go to their employer. <laughs> And it's it's a lot of money also involved, even though, of course, it's just as much a financial strain if you live in the UK, if you live in London and follow Chelsea there. But it doesn't really matter if you've never been to a game either. I mean, there are a lot of followers, of, of I suspect, of all of us uh, that maybe are from Africa or from Asia. They don't have that luxury of being able to go to the games uh, as frequently or ever because... They just don't have the financial means, and that's fine. Because if I get to meet someone who has a blue shirt on, as you already said, Eunice, mm. then I don't give a shit where he's from. I'll be talking with him about Chelsea, and it's happened often in my life that I've met someone who's a Chelsea fan, and you just immediately have a connection. And not not recognising that, I think that's an atrocity. You, I feel sorry for those people that really don't believe that 
the Hispanic mm-hmm. uh, count equally because you're missing out. And you know, yeah, big time. Black and white as that because, as you said, Eunice, I, w- I was also born and bred in in London in Bromley, and uh, yeah. I didn't have a choice. You know, for family reasons, we had to come over here to Austria. That was it. You know, I didn't have much to say there. Of course, I could now move over there. You know, we've got roots here now. It's not that yeah. easy. So uh, it's, it's always painted black and white by these uh, support your local kind of uh, fans, or I don't even want to call them fans. Are you actually a real supporter of Chelsea Football Club if you don't accept other Chelsea supporters? I think, you know, you could take a long, hard stay into that mirror. No, it's true. I, I, I know someone who lives in Canada, and she's a massive Chelsea supporter. Massive. Even though she's from Canada. And she's always telling me it's her dream, literally, like to go to Stamford Bridge and to watch Chelsea and to experience what we've experienced, you know, by going to going to games. Um, that's like the ultimate goal. Now, with someone with as much ambition as that and passion, she's telling me that she's not a real fan, you know, or or mm. even for anyone around the world that has to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to watch mm. Chelsea and they do it, mm. you know. Would you get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch a team? <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, honestly, um, it, it shouldn't even be a debate. Mm. I, I think, and this is beyond every uh, geographical border or anything, what makes you a fan is sacrifice. If you if you uh, have to sacrifice to stand up at, at three o'clock in the morning, if you have to sacrifice to um, travel to games via plane and train and whatever, if you have to sacrifice to uh, skip family dinners for watching Chelsea games or something, that is, is, is something that can't be taken away from anyone if he lives in America, in England, here in Austria or in Asia somewhere. Um, doesn't, or, or that does give me the impression if someone cares about his team and Funny enough, I think that there are match-going fans who have who do sacrifice much less than than fans living abroad. So it's not really a question of who is the best fan and who's the super fan who does the most, and it's not a competition of that. It's more or less we are a family, a global family, and I think we should celebrate that. However, what I think something that gets dismissed or gets dragged. Um, away from the debate and I think it's it's also very important as we're living in Austria we know that um, it's been two and a half years for myself that I have last been to um, a Bundesliga game in Austria so like the top tier of Austrian football yeah so because I am a fan of a global team a fan of a so-called super team super European superpower um, all the European uh, or other European teams not only the grassroots, but also professional football here in Austria loses out on my money and I'm not going there and they're playing in front of a thousand or two thousand people. So I get someone who says support your local team because I think there's there are some benefits in that because um, at the end of the day, everyone wants to play football. And if there isn't any money in Austrian football, let's say, Will there be good pitches for young players who want to develop? Will there be enough infrastructure for everyone? So I get the point, but doesn't make you any less of a fan if you are living abroad. So that's that's two separate discussions for me. Well, I mean, uh, I've got to say, I, I get your point with that, uh, mm. with the local club and all that. But for me, when, you know, when I moved here, I just, for example, don't have that connection with Austrian teams. I mean, completely disregarding that Austrian football shit, you know. And there's uh, a lot of Austrians that just support then Bayern, for example, or Dortmund. You know, I think it's the language barrier because no one says anything against if someone from Wales or from Scotland supports uh, supports Chelsea because you know Glasgow Rangers. We we have that friendship going on with the Rangers, and I don't think that certain people are aiming against them. But I think it's more about oh, it's outside. You know, I mean, this is getting. I don't want to get political, but of course, we're just in this day and age where. This thinking of, uh, you know, we're in this island, everything outside who gives a crap. I think that is something very dangerous. And Chelsea Football Club, as as a club, would not endorse that. Not at all, you know. I mean, most money that the club makes, uh, which we then invest in players, in all that, is, of course, from if we qualify Champions League, blah, blah, but is from 
outside the UK money that they make. The revenue from match-going fans, of course, will be a, a huge factor that contributes to uh, their revenue. But all the sales worldwide, you know, how, how many people live in the UK? 80 mil, something like that? I can't, I'm not sure. 60, yeah. It's but, like, oh, yeah, but, okay, yeah, 60. A small portion of that supports yeah. Chelsea. They want, you know, match-going fans don't go into the mega store every single match day and then no. spend money. But as soon as someone comes from Japan or from from uh, Nigeria, whatever, they will spend money in that mega store. And because, you know, you don't get there every day. Why not? And same from the US. And so a lot of that money, the most I could imagine, I'm no financial guru, but will also come from that. And Chelsea Football Club wouldn't be the same club if they wouldn't have that um, out. But, you know, that fandom outside the UK. Mm. No, it's true. It's crucial. It's crucial. The worldwide um, market, the worldwide audience is is huge, especially for a club like Chelsea that's trying to become, or let's, you know, let's say, let's hope we're trying to become an elite club, <laughs> you know. Um, the American market, the Asian market, there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many Chelsea fans in Africa. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's countless. So, yeah. It'll be yeah. interesting with Pulisic actually now how much that actually affects uh, yep. the American market because I think that's got a lot of potential. And Pulisic, you know, I'm not his biggest fan yet, but <laughs> he could be financially speaking mm. uh, a huge, a huge win for Chelsea. Mm. Do, do you already know where we go on pre-season for the upcoming season, like in summer? Maybe this will be an American tour as well. Um. I'm not sure if it's announced already, or I don't. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I think there's something announced for June, but not mm. pre-season uh, as such. Like a post-season or something. Yeah, because post-season. June is I think yeah. there's post yeah. season something, but I'm, I don't mm. think pre-season yet. No, but it, I I could imagine us going to the US. Mm. Undoubtedly, I mean. <laughs> I, mean yeah. I know the last the last few years we've been to we've been to the states and we've been to Asia, so. Mm. The only snag is there's the Gold Cup coming up this summer. So, um, oh, we there. not actually mm. be at Chelsea at the start. So, if we do go on preseason to the US, it will make much sense if he's not there. Yeah, so definitely. I have to have, wait and see about that. Mm. Yeah, but anyhow, let's, let's end this discussion because um, I think we are very much in um, terms of we agree on everything we've said uh, mutually here. Um, one game we've had last last week was uh, against Malmo in the Europa League. Um, it wasn't the brightest of performances, but at least we came away with a win in somewhat of a hostile atmosphere, which I wasn't expecting of a Swedish club. Um, what do we make of that game? Um, does it show anything, any steps towards where we want to go in terms of playing style, in terms of um, maybe camaraderie, motivation, everything we've lacked so far um, this year round. Uh, Eunice, I come to you first with that question. Um, to, to sum it up, no. <laughs> 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 no. Um, it's, it's nice that we got two away goals. Um, however, we have to look at it in the same context as we did Huddersfield. Mm. Huddersfield, you know, we smashed 5-0 and even then people were like, okay, it's Huddersfield. And it's true that they're they're struggling really badly. Malmo, all due respect to them and how far they've come, um, I know they're regarded as the most successful Swedish team. Um, and they they do have some, some prestige there. But coming up against Chelsea, who, you know, we should be on another level. Um, and that game was quite tight. Uh, too tight. <laughs> too tight. So after the 6-0 against City. I'm glad we won. We It's what we needed. Maybe mentally it's eased the players down a little bit, but the performance itself wasn't reassuring. Not at all. Um, mm. It was slow. Um, we were... We, we had some good movements, but overall, we were losing the ball. We were kicking the ball off the pitch. Um, players weren't moving. It was static. The ball movement was slow. The players were moving slow. It was just just not good. And hopefully tomorrow, I mean, we're going to get into tomorrow, but hopefully United is a different story. Um, I'm happy we won. I'm happy there's two away goals. It makes me think we're definitely going through. Mm. You know, we will beat them at home. 
I'm quite sure. And if we don't, I'll be scared. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, um, overall, happy we won, but no, not mm. not the best performance. Mm. Uh, one thing that stuck in my mind um, watching the lineup before the game uh, that Callum hudson yet again didn't feature in the first team and then only came on in the 84th minute uh, Jimmy what do we make of that? Uh, um, that says it all <laughs> Yeah <laughs> pretty much I mean it doesn't make sense you know put, uh, when did Hazard come on I think it was the 70th minute if yeah. I'm not mistaken mm. yeah. so Subbing on Hazard uh, while we were actually 2-0 ahead instead of Callum hudson Doy. I mean, up until now, I was just angry when Sari did that. But now I'm pretty sure that even in the Europa League that he's still doing this, persisting with this uh, in-game management, um, that there's a problem. I really do think there is a problem um, apparent, which we will come to know in the course of the next few months. I think Sari just doesn't trust Hudson Odoi anymore. I think he was gradually building up some confidence in him. Then he handed in that transfer request. He's an old Italian bloke, you know. He's very traditional. He he thinks he's been more or less. I, I could imagine. I'm not saying he does that, but that's my opinion. I think he uh, feels uh, snaked on more or less, and. Um, he just had to more or less give him some game time during January just, you know, because Mariner and the board probably told him, do it because we don't want to lose him, you know, even though he did still push. And now that that's gone and he's got until the summer, you know, I, I don't know. I can't explain it otherwise. And the hudson Adoy situation, it was ridiculous during that game. And it has been for a few weeks now. And just to add to what Yuna said, um, yeah, I mean... I, I don't feel confident at all after that performance. I mean, great that we won, but after the worst defeat in 30 years, you'd expect a reaction, and we didn't get that. And on the contrary, we were sloppy, as Yuna said. We we didn't play, sorry. I, I'm not going to even go into detail about this. I mean, we didn't play what we were supposed to be playing, what we played the first few months, and it's just started, it's, it's gone completely the hell everything and I, I no one can explain really why motivation did, did did we show motivation that game oh genuine question to you two did 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 we look motivated <sighs> not Once really again, the question yeah <laughs> i would say there was there was a few glimpses in maybe a couple of players it wasn't a game completely void of any motivation whatsoever mm. you could see little little glimpses in only a few but no, mm. no, overall no. Mm. So I, 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 where you'd want actually players, like, sorry, and is where you want Hudson Odoi to come on because mm. I'd expect he's to be he would be motivated, you know. So mm. it's ridiculous. Um, what I what I would have, as a manager is that I would that I would have taken out as many players as possible from that Manchester City performance because I expected players to be. Extremely down in confidence, um, but he obviously didn't do that. Um, I, I mean, except for Marcus Alonso, I think, and and Rudiger. Um, but then Ross Barkley was playing, and I was really happy for him to to get a goal after that dreadful performance against Manchester City. Because if he would have gotten through a game with another, I mean, it, it was a, an average performance of him uh, at best, but at least he scored a goal, and that would be a, a, a confidence raiser. Um, but yeah, how did he uh, score it? Sorry? How did you score that goal? that really gave him confidence that his scoring's back, you know? It, 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 was, it, it was his first goal this year, so it wasn't that bad, though. Did so you uh, confidence in you, Andy? Not really, but I, I just... I just tried to to talk up the game a bit because uh, I think 2-1 away at Malmö is not a bad result. I remember Salzburg going there on best Austrian side here and they tried to qualify for the Champions League, which they never managed to do, I think in 12 times trying. And they went there. Malmö was not expected to be a good team and they absolutely played them off the park. So um, I was aware that Malmö is not an easy away day. Um, so I think coming away with a 2-1 two, a two, uh, win, uh, especially under the circumstances we went there and with the performance we, we put together on the day, 
it's not a bad result, and I think we will go through. Because at the end of the day, um, it could have happened like uh, it happened to Arsenal, and they, they come away with a 1-0 uh, <laughs> defeat at Sparta Borisov, and now they have to... If, if they concede at home, I'm, I'm very curious if what, what happens there, because they need three goals in that case. Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, Giroud scoring also a good sign. He doesn't score many many times, so I, I think there are positives to take away from that game. But are these positives enough to kind of make us believe that we can um, win against Manchester United in the FA Cup? What do you say, Eunice? Um, I, I said in my preview earlier on, um, it depends what Chelsea shows up, and it depends who's starting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Literally, I I don't think I would know up until six thirty tomorrow, our time. <laughs> so one hour before <laughs> kickoff, when the lineups revealed, I'll be able to go. We're winning this. We're losing this. But um, I'm not confident. Okay. In all honesty, I'm not confident. I think we can get it done. It depends who's what che- what Chelsea's going to show up. But United, despite the couple of absentees that they're going to have are a good side under Solskjaer. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely confident. But, but elaborate on uh, who is starting. You said it's down to who is starting, who is in the lineup. Tell me, which players do you want to see? <laughs> the same as every single Chelsea fan, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, if I see, I'll give an example. If I see Alonso starting tomorrow, mm. um, I see Barkley in that midfield. I see Hudson Odoi on the bench. To be honest, I think that's going to happen. But there's no reason to not play him against Malmo if he's not going to play against Man United. So, um, specifically those, I would say Alonso, Barkley, and no Hudson Odoi. I I think he's going to go with William. But um, if I see any of those, um, specifically Alonso, Barkley, we know it's a bit of a footballing issue it's just the fact that he's been playing bad he scored so if sorry was to go with him maybe he's just thinking okay he maybe he's starting form so play him um hudson Adoy doesn't trust him because he's too young or something i don't know but if alonso is playing tomorrow i've got no hope man <laughs> i've got no hope <laughs> Well, it's it's going to be Alonso versus whoever plays on that wing there. Uh, Lingard, Rashford, Martial, whoever. No, uh, Lingard, terrifying. Lingard, Martial are out. I think. Are they're, they? They're mid- yeah, they're out. They're not playing. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. Were, read the, read the yeah. Time. So I think he'll go uh, Pogba, Matic, Herrera, three man midfield maybe, and then the front three could be Mata, uh, Rashford, and Lukaku or yeah. Sanchez. Someone. Oh. All of them are. God, if Mata plays on the right, actually, even if Alonso plays, we w- might have an even, evenly paced duel. You know, it, you know Mata's <laughs> a great player, but he does not have pace to burn. So that would actually be good. I would be okay with. Uh, no, I wouldn't be. No, I can't even say that. No, no, mm. I can't. <laughs> no, because you, you, you can completely forget that because what he lacks in pace, he he makes up in trickery and. Yeah. And Mata, he always cuts into his left foot. And if we know always. one thing, Alonso doesn't have a right foot. Exactly. So, cutting in, I'll get that one. Okay, let me rephrase that. I'd rather have him play against Mata than against Rashford, because I think Rashford would tear him a new one. I'm absolutely <laughs> dead. So, so uh, yeah, but I think, I think that's, as Yuna said, uh, those three positions. So, left back. That's uh, left CM and the right wing. Those are the three positions where Chelsea fans argue, disagree, discuss, whatever uh, at yeah. the moment in t- this moment. I think centre backs getting a bit into the discussion as well now. But yeah. um, those three are the, the big ones. Mm. I personally would love to see Andreas Christensen start on Saturday uh, tomorrow because I. I always have rated him, and he's he was one of the first names on our team sheet until that stupid Barcelona game, and then that is confirmed. True. But he was one of the first ones. He was so good. Everyone's raving about him, and he's mm. still got in his locker, and I thought the games that he has played, even though they were against Minos, he was good. He was solid, and he can 
play that sweeper. Well, not sweeper like Jorginho, but he more or less can uh, give the solidity at the mm. back. While David Luiz and Rudiger are quite similar in the way that they can be rash. They take chances. Um, Rudiger yeah. hasn't been good in recent uh, weeks. And uh, playing those two against a pacey, even though Martial and um, Lingard aren't playing, against a very pacey Man United attack, that mm. would be very bad. Because it's the same as against City. The same uh, problem you have there. They've got a very pacey attack. We play our normal defence. We're going to get absolutely annihilated. So, yeah, uh, I, I think Emerson would do a great job. He wasn't bad against Malmo, if you ask me. One of the... No ones that I say that was a positive performance. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, sure. Higuain has to start. You know, I mean, at least we have a striker that we can trust now. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah. A... I think there's there's one or two things we can learn from uh, Paris Saint-Germain, even though they're completely on another level than us at the moment. But um, if we finally, and I haven't seen that for the last two months or so, get it together that we have some good pressing in the game, like that we that we finally move move uh, a few yards to the top, that the defense comes with it, that we move as a unit and not two or three players pressing in some spaces and there are big gaps behind them. Um, we can actually cause them issues because finally that winning streak of, of Solskjaer is, is broken with uh, the two... 2-0 win of, of, of um, Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League. And um, so I think the confidence is not low with Manchester United because they know they can beat every team uh, if, the, if the time is right. And of course, they can beat Chelsea. They know that. But I think uh, if you press down their centre-halves, and I don't know who they are going to play, but I expect... Um, well... Who am I expecting? Um, funny enough, I think Lindelof is is, is now the first the, the the first name on the team sheet when it comes to centre backs. But next to Lindelof, you can always have someone like Phil Jones or, or Chris Smalling, and you can cause them easily issues if if you're pressing. And Higuain is a pressing guy. He even pressed against Manchester City when no one else did. Oh. So if we finally get it together and and press as a unit, I think we can have success there. It's but but it, it's also down to um, Marcus Alonso not playing. I think it's it's our downfall if he if he does play. It's not down to him alone. But I think uh, the chances are very limited if he plays. Um, don't know what's going on with Ruben Loftus Cheek now that he wasn't featuring against Malmo. Uh, is he back for the game? He will face a um, a fitness test tomorrow. Okay. So uh-huh. in the afternoon they'll know if he's fit or not. Mm. Can, can okay. I ask you a question? Uh, what would you think if uh, I tell you that Mateo Kovacic would play instead of Jorginho as the regista? I would do it. Yeah? Well, mm. I would do it. I just don't think Sari will. <laughs> That's the okay. problem. I agree with that, but why do you think it would be a good choice? I think, literally, I think Jorginho at the moment is off form. And Kovacic is capable of playing the regista. Um, he's a good passer, he's got good vision, even defensively he's solid, um, which is something that I wasn't too keen on him because I know he's more of an offensive player, he's someone that plays a bit more attacking, um, but the the little times he has dropped when Jorginho's been subbed off and Kovacic has taken that role, he's done well. So I'd happily, I'd happily do it. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of having one player exempt from any chance of being dropped just because there's no one else to play. You know, it, it means he's got immunity for the rest of the season. He can do what he wants. And that's, I don't like that. So um, if, he's, if he's off form, he's playing bad, he needs to take a little bit of time off. Yeah, play Kovacic there. And then when, when Jorginho gets reintroduced again, hopefully he can pick himself up and, and play better. Mm. Um, but I played. I played quite British, Yeah. What do you think, Andy? Well, if that happens, that would surely mean that Kante is playing. Well, he would play regardless. But on the other hand, if uh, Ruben Loftus Cheek has um, a check tomorrow, will mean that he is in question. So he wouldn't start. He would come from the bench. That would mean Barclay is playing. Yes. And I, I, I would have Jorginho over uh, Barclay on the left. So please leave Kovacic on the left. 
play Yoginio because it, it's a safe option, let's yeah. say. Um, especially in a game like that, I don't like. Well, maybe we should we should try we should try some risk. We we should, we should we should come up with with new ideas because we rarely do under Sari, and that is something that we really easily get found out this season. But um, you know, I wouldn't take a risk. Okay, well, I I I must say I I agree with Junius. Uh, I will try it as well mm-hmm. because. One thing that we have seen by with Jorginho, when he hasn't gotten a bit of rest, he plays even worse. And this will be his third game this week, or in a period of mm-hmm. seven days. Well, okay, it's eight days, but, you know, get my point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that would be a good idea, especially against uh, a United team that, as you said, Andy, is mm-hmm. still very dangerous. The only thing that's on our side is that they haven't won against us for mm. how long but then again we didn't lose that high until last sunday in over 30 years so this is kind of a period where we're breaking mm. records negative ones so it could very well be the case that this is the first time that they win since that chicharito non-goal that was scored mm. and that would be heartbreaking even though i think that us being kicked out of the fa cup wouldn't be a bad thing i know this might be controversial but I think we should, uh, you know, put our eggs in the Europa League basket, to be mm-hmm. quite honest, because, you know, the league and Europa League, we can't concentrate on more because Sarri's not rotating. So we have to mm-hmm. focus on things. And four fronts with this squad. Well, not, That's true. We're going to falter. We're going to falter. And mm-hmm. the league, we're already in the final there, you know, so might as well give it a shot there for that and get the trophy. But FA Cup, I... I I'd honestly feel the few younger players. He did it with Napoli. You know, he really did it with Napoli in the Europa League. He played the B team there, if I'm not mistaken, because he didn't care about it. But in Italy, of course, things were a bit easier. So it'd be interesting <laughs> to see if he does the same tomorrow and gives Lof- uh, Loftus Cheek, Hudson Odoi, for example, a chance mm. to Tampa do. Mm. I'm not convinced because looking at all the other teams remaining in the competition of the FA Cup, um, Manchester City is the only team left out of the top six other than Chelsea, Manchester United, and only one of them will go through. So that means maybe if he if he goes past this game, sorry, he will see, all right, maybe if, if we are unlucky, we get Manchester City in the next round because any, anything can happen. But realistically, we get a Watford or a Brighton or something. And it's already the, qu- uh, the quarterfinals next. Yeah, time. Watford, Brighton, Palace, Millwall. I mean, yeah, still, what what would you get? I mean, I like the magic of the FA Cup. Don't get me wrong, boys. But mm. if we win, we get into the Europa League. That's it. You know, if we win the Europa League, we get into the Champions League. That's that. There's nothing. I know this sounds dreadful mm. because I really do like the FA Cup. But mm. this season specifically, there's nothing to play for in the FA Cup, even though there's only the two Manx clubs left. I don't see us being able to push on all three or four fronts. So I think we should focus. But is it is it Champions League qualification over a trophy for you? This season, where there's so many things looming, like Hazard's departure, the transfer ban, and where we need more money we have to spend. Because if we do get this ban and we, uh, you know, uh, get then this summer still to spend, then we have to spend, you know, splash the cash, you know. And having Champions League football will only benefit us. So, yes, this season, it's we, we have the League Cup. Don't forget that. We win the League Cup, even though I don't think we will, unfortunately, because we got smacked. But if we do, great. You know, then we've got first trophy. That I think that's a big burden off his back. But it's Champions League for me. This season, I don't want to sound like an Arsenal supporter for the last decade. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> this season... I really do think that it'd be better to get in the Champions League than win a trophy. And I don't care if it's a beta mentality. Mm. That's just mm. the most rational thing, in my opinion. Okay, but let, let me put a question to Eunice here. As I've heard that a, a couple of times, especially surrounding the Malmo game, um, that the 6-0 wasn't even... Um, well, it was a bad result, and it was the worst result for 30 years. But um, for the club and for the board... Um, it is only alarming when we are not looking like we're qualifying for the Champions League for next season. That will be 
once that point is reached, Sari will be in question, but not until that. Do you think um, that is the case? And if it is the case, are we likely to make Champions League football for next season? I I do think that is the case. <clears throat> I do think he was hired on the basis that, okay, new philosophy, we're looking for long term. However, the, the aim and the target is top four. Mm. Or... Champions League qualification, because I don't think at the start of the season we were contemplating going to win the Europa League. I don't think that was, you know, mm -hmm. top four was the aim. Um, if that gets to a point where it becomes nearly, I wouldn't say impossible, but in doubt, mm. then, yeah, I think his position will be, will be under jeopardy. I think right now it's already starting. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, just based on history... And based mm. on how we've gotten rid of managers in the past, right now, I think it's beginning. If tomorrow doesn't go well, if Sunday doesn't go well, and then we have Spurs in the league, I think that could be the one, you know. But mm. if we're winning, if we, if we do pick things up, um, and especially the Spurs game, we win, I think he might have bought himself a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but a top four, without a doubt, has to be the aim. Especially, okay. we weren't there last year us without Champions League mm. football for two or three seasons is... Yeah. Mm. And what do you think is the more likely route to get Champions League football? Is it the Europa League or is it the Premier League? I would say Europa League. Okay. Jimmy, do, do you agree? Yeah, no, look at the teams that are still in there. I mean, uh, the Premier League is so unpredictable nowadays. Every team can beat every team. You know, okay, yeah. let's they not Huddersfield because they're crap. They're generally the worst <laughs> side I've seen since Derby, in, I think, was 2006 or seven. But otherwise, you know, mm. you can we, we can go to Watford, we can go to West Ham, wherever we can host uh, Bournemouth and we lose, you know. So it's, it's, it's not easy. And um, if we lose against Spurs or even only draw, I think our top four hopes are... Uh, just going to be the more slimmer because Manchester United just has the better squad than us, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Even Tottenham has the better squad than us. The and less founded squad, yeah. even though they haven't spent for two transfer windows. So uh, yeah. I think it has to be the Europa League. I mean, looking at the teams in it, there's Arsenal, who might actually get eliminated, which would be hilarious. And then there's like, who else? Napoli, Sevilla, mm. Valencia, I think. Yeah, Valencia is one team. I'm not really too bothered with Valencia. I mean, Sevilla. No. Benfica know, looks good this year. Ones, yeah, Benfica. They... Yeah. Yeah, Benfica. Inter. Yeah, okay. Inter, but without Rick Icardi, it seems. Yeah, but Icardi won't play anymore, I think. For them. I mean, that's a different topic entirely. But, um, mm. you know, these are teams, apart from, let's say, Sevilla and Napoli, where I say we can beat them, you know. And if we meet them in the semi-final, we're nearly there, you know. So hopefully until then we can get our crap together and then we can beat that kind of a team. And that isn't impossible, you know. Napoli's a great side and the same goes for Sevilla. But we should, in any case, still be the favourites with our quality. Mm. So uh, for me as well, it's got to be the Europa League. Yeah, of course. If, if, I mean, even if we win against Manchester United, you, you've said it before, Four competitions. Uh, Manchester United themselves only one competition because I, I'm pretty sure they will drop out of the Premier League, of the Champions League. Um, and yeah, Arsenal, whatever they do. Um, so yeah, I think all the other three teams are out of reach for us. Um, yeah, so probably I will agree uh, with you two on the premise of Europa League is 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 the route we should be focusing on because. Yeah, at the end of the day, Premier League, uh, it, it all can change within one or two weeks because, uh, yeah, you know, one 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 top six team losing against the the other one, and um, everything seems to change. But yeah, um, I think as we are talking for forty minutes straight now, we should easily come to an end now. Um, I just want to do predictions. Um, Manchester United. Um, playing against Chelsea in the FA Cup. Um, I think you've you've done a poll on Twitter, Eunice. I, I did, did yeah. yeah. I, I haven't checked it. I, I did it I did, earlier on. I did, because I voted on it. Chelsea fans are in favour of us uh, making it through. I think 
two thirds uh, against a, against one third um, Manchester United. But yeah, uh, wow. I'm not that confident. You know, uh, I think even though we're playing at home, and Manchester United had us on the brink of 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 defeat already, and I was there at the stadium, um, Austrian Austrian fan featuring on Stamford Bridge. So yeah, Rolly, <laughs> hello. Um, Plastic. Pla- <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, I think even 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 back at at at, at that time, um, Manchester United was quite a force. Um, I was impressed with their speed up front. Um, so I guess it will be a tight game, but I think Manchester United will edge it two one. Yunus, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Mm. That's exactly. I I think. Again, it, it depends. It depends what Chelsea is going to show up. I can't even say. But at the moment, it doesn't look good. And United look rejuvenated. They look fresh. They look uh, happy. Mm. It all look positive, and they're bringing that to us, who are who have been in a little bit of a struggle, just off the back of a six 0 thrashing. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's not looking good. I think it'll be tight. It won't be a thrashing. We won't, I don't think we'll get spanked. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, I, I think it's going to be a tight loss. A tight loss. Um, before I answer, if we draw, do we go the penalties or no extra time and penalties? Extra time, extra time penalties. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, the thing is, if you would have asked me while Mourinho was still in charge to do a prediction on this game uh, after they just lost two 0 to PSG, I would have said, "Well, this is the perfect time to face them." Exactly. But I think now they're going to be up for it because oh, we have to prove something. So. I think we're going to draw at full time. I think it's going to be a one all, and then we're going to get, uh, well, we're going to concede in penal, um, extra time, I mean, and going to lose also 2 uh, 1. I, I'd also say, but I think we'll draw initially. <laughs> Not that that helps, but, you know. Yeah. There's more well, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> great, yay. Yeah, well. oh, yeah. So much positivity if, here. Yeah. If you do go into extra time, then I also bet on Callum Hudson-Odoi to come in in the 118th minute. So... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, no, I I am sorry. Don't get me wrong, but his substitution use is ridiculous. But sorry, yeah. Just wanted to clear that. What's the... uh, What's what's the bet on Barkley and Kovacic around the 65th, 70th minute? Yeah, that's... Yeah, that... Ooh. ooh. (laughs) I mean, what what odds could you get? I I have to write to Paddy odds (laughs) of... You can requ- request a bet. They'll probably yeah. give you evens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's so sad. I can't believe it. It's unpredictable nowadays. Uh. Well, yeah. Um, not ending on a positive note here, but anyway. Uh, Eunice, where can people find you on the social media? Um, social media is my the same as my YouTube name, so Eunice HH, whether that's YouTube or Twitter. Instagram is the same, Eunice HH, but 92 on the end. Okay, Jimmy, <laughs> do it for us. <laughs> for us, uh, okay, please do follow us at the Attacking Two Pod uh, on Twitter, and of course, subscribe here on YouTube. We'd very much appreciate it. Uh, drop us a like. Um, otherwise, I mean, follow our. Uh, uh, personal Twitter accounts, which will be in the description below. And just from my side again, thank you, Eunice, for coming on. It was an absolute pleasure. Honestly, thank you for having me, guys. It's been it's been good. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. As have we. Even yeah. though the end note might not be the most positive one, but still, may, maybe next time you come on, if you do, we'd love to have you on again. Then we can talk about, I don't know, us smacking Tottenham. Oh, no, no, no. What we got? Liverpool 5 0 or something. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? No, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Henderson slips. Higuain scores. Um, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. Andy, take it away. Take it away. Yeah. So I just, well, we had all the Twitter handles, we had all the plugins. So it's just left for me to say uh, thanks for listening and tune in the next time on the Attacking 2 podcast. Until then, keep the blue flag flying high.